Um, I know uh, over the years the laws for car seats have changed a lot all over the world and uh, having grown up in the States and being an American I'm more familiar with those. I remember being a little kid and a lot of the cars not having any seat belts in the back seats and then when they started making them with car seat with uh, seat belts in the back seats that was kind of a big deal um, and some states didn't require that people in the back seat be buckled in um, but then that slowly changed and then I know just a few years ago ten years ago or so um, you know having the special like kind of harness system and the little hook latch system that's in the cars now is really popular so um, you know car seats have evolved a lot having a junior seat for younger kids um, too even when they're too big for a car seat um, all those things have kind of evolved uh, when we were in the states we were able to with my little girl when she was just a little baby you know we got used to carrying her around in that removable car seat that could also be like a kind of bassinet that you carry around everywhere um, here in Japan I was always very surprised because people don't buckle in very often and they certainly don't make their kids buckle in they don't even make their kids sit down uh, a lot of times you see the kids crawling around on the inside of the car uh, you see moms get into the car with the baby on their lap and they drive away um, and especially here in this little Hobunk town that I live in that's really common um, and I was just appalled because it was just so terrified for those children because if there's an accident obviously uh, sadly they'll be dead so um, that's not a big deal here. It's like, yeah, whatever, kids can do whatever they want, just get in the car, we're good to go. Um, and slowly, the, the laws have changed now. You're supposed to have a car seat. Um, you're supposed to even have a junior seat until kids are about, you know, six years old. Um, but uh, it's still not very strictly enforced. You get a ticket if you don't have it, you're supposed to. But I still see lots of people driving around town and their kids are crawling around in the back seats, standing up on the seats, making all sorts of crazy ruckus. And a lot of times, you know, my daughter is coming home and her friend's going to come over to our house and they kind of wrinkle their nose when I tell them, okay, you have to use the junior car seat because I have an extra for when her friends get in the car. Uh, but a lot of parents don't even bother, uh, and that's always kind of a little scary because I don't want my daughter to get into a car that doesn't have a car seat. But if that family doesn't care or have an extra, it's a little tricky to say, oh, well, then my daughter can't get in your car. Uh, that's, that's always a hard thing. You know, I think in the States it's a little easier to be kind of persnickety about those kinds of things. But here, uh, you know, you don't want to, people look at you weird if you make a big deal about it. So, um... But then I know my mother-in-law, she just got caught because she was giving her friend's granddaughter a ride and she didn't have a car seat for her, and so she got a ticket. Um, and, you know, it's not just about tickets, obviously. The bigger point is that it's not safe. Um, but that is probably part of the reason why people don't follow the rules so much. There's so few car accidents here that, um, you know, the States looks ridiculous. You drive around, you see one or two every day, you know. Um, I've only seen really minor fender benders. Now, obviously, you know, somebody running, rear-ending you at a light is enough force if a child's not in a car seat or buckled down to really hurt them. So it's still really important, but I think a lot of people just don't get the urgency of it. And uh, that's sad because I'd hate to see somebody have their child get hurt or uh, worse yet, killed because car seats are not enforced. Um, so I'd be curious what the rules are in your country and if you think, you know, car seats are important. My husband always jokes that, you know, uh, just having them in the car in general is a huge distraction and maybe they should make a new rule that says no kids in the car because it's so loud and noisy that it is hard to operate a vehicle when you have noisy children. For that matter, noisy friends, you know, people yapping at you, talking the whole time when you're supposed to be driving. Uh, always hard to keep everybody calm down and, uh, you know, respecting the driver so that everybody can be safe. Um, I know for sure cell phones are a huge question always too. Uh, in Japan, you are not allowed to talk on the cell phone when you're driving. So this results in all these crazy people out of nowhere stopping their car. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not kidding. You're driving on the road and all of a sudden the person in front of you puts their hazard lights on which means that they're going to slow down or stop or they're sorry because they're in the way. So they, they put their hazards on and they just kind of pull over to the side but not really a lot. And this again could be because I live in a Hobunk town but uh, it's kind of funny because, you know, they cause a scene by stopping themselves so that they can be safe, but everyone around is kind of bothered by the fact that all of a sudden this car is stopped in the middle of the road and you have to go around. Um, but driving in general in Japan is about that. It's about being a very 
de defensive driver. You have to be aware. Um, people uh, just assume you're going to let them go. They don't wait for a chance, and, and a lot of times they just turn and right in front of you. So you, you kind of have to always be on the defense, always looking out and making sure to give everyone a chance to go. Um, general car etiquette is kind of connected to the car seat safety too. Uh, the horn is only used to tell people to go ahead or to say uh, thank you. <laughs> so it's a nice instrument, not what I'm used to in the States driving around, especially in DC too or in Denver. And, you know, you lay on the horn and glare at people. People don't do that here. They, if you, if you use your horn at all, it's to say hi or to say thanks. Uh, the hazard lights are a huge tool in driving in Japan. You use them all the time to tell people thank you. Um, if they've let you turn in front of them, then you tell them thank you by using your hazard lights. If um, you uh, are going to stop, like in the case of the cell phone, you use them to tell people you're going to stop. If you're having car trouble, you use it to tell people you're going to stop too. Uh, so it's a huge part of driving. I've never once used my hazards when I was in the States. So that took some getting used to, understanding the etiquette of how to tell people um, thank you for letting you in. Nobody in the States would ever say thank you for letting you turn in front of them. It's kind of hysterical, actually, I think. Um, but uh, it makes for peaceful driving. There aren't very many accidents. There are a lot of people that are not paying attention and do, you know, run it, do, you know, we have a lot of fender, fender benders, people bumping into each other that are right in front. Um, but, you know, that's about the extent of it. Occasionally you'll see some really big accidents, but they usually have to do with people falling asleep at the wheel. Uh, you get a lot of these, uh, you know, salary men coming home really late at night, working really hard, and uh, they fall asleep, uh, truck drivers falling asleep. Um, drunk driving is not that much of a big deal because a lot of people that do drink a lot, you take the public transport system, like trains and buses, to get home, or taxis. Taxis are just a given here, um, as they are in some cities in the States too. Uh, so, you know, there's, there isn't the same fear or threat of that.